especially welcome all visitors to our parish and those joining us online. Today, Father Mike will lead us in the celebration of God's love for us on the Epiphany of the Lord. You will find the readings on page 878 of your hymnals. Please take a moment to stand and greet those around you. <coughs> Please listen to the announcement of Easter and movable feasts. <clears throat> no, dear brethren, that as we have rejoiced at the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, so by leave of God's mercy, we announce to you also the joy of his resurrection, who is our Savior. On the 14th day of February will fall Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of the fast of the most sacred Lenten season. On the 31st day of March, you will celebrate with joy Easter Day, the Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the twelfth day of May will be the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the nineteenth day of May, the Feast of Pentecost. On the second day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. On the first day of December, the first Sunday of the Advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. To whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our gathering song. It is uh, number 329 in your hymnal, We Three Kings, 329. <coughs> to that perfect light, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've gathered together for the feast of the Holy Epiphany of the Lord. 
Let us remember the way that the Lord has made manifest in our lives and give thanks for the times we've turned away from him. We ask redirection. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. day revealed your only begotten Son to all the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines on you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nation shall be brought to you. 
Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And behold, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least of the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. memory devices. I'm sure you've used them in school. I long for the day when we have teleprompters. That'd be really nice. (laughs) The Feast of the Epiphany. Epiphany is a moment that changes the whole story. You know, when you're reading in literature or watching a movie, and there's that moment when the protagonist has an epiphany, is able to see things entirely differently, and everyone changes. Every person His story changes, her story changes, history itself is changed. And that's what we celebrate today, the epiphany, that manifestation of the Lord that changed all of history, brings now Gentiles, people from the East. It brings those who, we don't know exactly who they were or what they were. Magi, it's a difficult word apparently in in Scripture to, to redefine. Does it mean wise men? They certainly were wise. They made the journey and they stopped and they worshiped. Others walked on by. Some tried to kill him, the child. Were they astronomers? There's a lot of literature in the history of astronomy over various stars that made bright lights at this very time. Were they astrologers? Whoever they were, they were wonderful because we follow them today. And what they were is not as important as that they came and they made the scene complete. Were there three of them? We don't know. There were three gifts assigned, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Three gifts, three gift bearers. It seems to make sense. You wouldn't want to buy more statues, would you? And they, they, they're each one of us. They come from different walks of earth. They come from different places. They come because the child is there. And the child is the important one that gathers them. It's the child that changes their history and ours. It's the child that changes their story and ours. It's the Prince of Peace that gathers everybody together to a peaceful kingdom where the animals are getting along, where everything in Isaiah is fulfilled that we heard about as we read about it in Advent before now. 
let's think for a moment of these gifts. These gifts, what would you offer? These gifts, what is available to be offered? These gifts, what might they be? Let's maybe think of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, there are seven of them. And maybe we can just use a few this year. This year, make it your resolution, this epiphany. Make it the change in your life to think of wisdom, to think of understanding, knowledge, awe and wonder, how wonderful God is, to try and understand others, to try and understand the role of God, to have the wisdom to put it all to use. Research knowledge. Who is God? What's he all about? How does he fit into your life? Will that make a change, an epiphany in your life? There are seven gifts. If you don't like the ones that I suggested, search for others. And then the fruits of the Holy Spirit. There are 12 of those. Imagine that you have the gift of peace this year, the gift of patience you might be lacking, kindness, which you could use a little bit better, generosity, or one of my favorites, joy. As I said, there are 12. What might change your life? What might change the life of the people around you? If those don't work, consider the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. I think you're getting the point. Go back and think of what it is that you need and you need to give for this year to be different, for people to say, there's a difference in that person this year because you have the epiphany of Jesus. You have the epiphany of the Holy Spirit. We're told in magnificent ways that they went home differently. When you come to church, go home differently. When you pray, live differently because of these gifts, because of these fruits, because of these virtues that come to life in you. They come from all over the world, these three, and we've come from all over the world too, St. Juliana. And God gives us always an invitation, as he gave the invitation to the whole world, to look up and see the star, the star that makes a huge difference in our lives. Sometimes we're able to see stars, sometimes we're not. It seems to me that's kind of strange because there's another kind of star as well, not just the celestial star, but our proximity to Hollywood and all the stars there and that walk of fame. It wasn't too terribly long ago that I took a 28-year-old who grew up in Orange County on Ponterelli tours of Los Angeles and Beverly Hills and Hollywood. He'd never put his hand, 28 years old, in the Chinese theater, never seen the place. Wondered why they called it the Chinese theater. So he went across the street and I said, look at it. Then we walked down the Walk of Fame and I was asked, Father Mike, who are these people? Can you imagine forgetting who some of these people are? We went to see the grave of Marilyn Monroe and we were driving, where are we going? Let's see Marilyn Monroe's grave, who was she? Oh, uh, heavenly Betty. And we saw at that wonderful little um, cemetery Marilyn Monroe and Dean Martin and Don Knotts, all the others that are buried there. And I was asked again, who are these people? How quickly we forget. But if we forget those that lived among us, at least some of us, not terribly long ago, we could easily forget him who continues to live among us today, whose body we receive at the heavenly table, whose word we hear proclaimed in scripture, whose body we are when we gather together as Christ. We are the stars of our families. We are the stars of the place where we work. We're the stars of the places where we're educated and where we recreate. Let us bring some new life and an epiphany to those places as we change our lives and change the lives of others. I suggest this year and this time, especially when we seem to sense polarization in a number of communities, including the community called church, what if we really concentrated on the prayer of St. Francis? 
we seem to haul out all the others every now and again. Think of the prayer of St. Francis, that you want to end doubt by bringing faith. You'd like to end hatred by bringing love. You would change injury by pardoning. Despair by the gift of hope. Darkness is replaced by the gift of light. Sadness, the gift of joy. And then each one of us, not so much wanting to be consoled as to console someone else, not so much wanting to be understood as to understand the other person or the other company or the other side. And finally, not wanting to be loved so much as to give love, to understand, to be consoled, to give love, to be a person of joy, light, hope, pardon, love, and faith. That's all asked by the prayer of St. Francis. I think it might be a moment of epiphany for the whole Christian Catholic community if we prayed that prayer this time around and changed our lives because it does. Their lives were changed because he changed it. Our lives will be changed when we follow that star as well, that star that leads us today and always. May we find our hope, our peace, our joy, our understanding, and especially our knowledge, wisdom, awe, and wonder in Jesus once more. Renewing our faith, we go forth to be the people of God at St. Juliana. God bless. Stand up and do that too. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Let us pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. For I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we make our journey to and from the Lord of life, we offer these petitions for Holy Church, people of the world, and our own community of faith. For Holy Church, that she will welcome all people as Christ welcomed them with peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants, immigrants, and refugees, and all who seek a better life, that they will be treated as the children of God, which they are, and for the gifts they bring from and to each nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For intellectuals, scientists, and all seekers after truth, that they may follow the road of faith and reason to Christ, the light of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that God will bring them to himself. For all who are ill, that God's hands will heal them. For everyone for whom we have promised to pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the Masses this Sunday, the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish 
and Grammar School for the repose of the soul of Angelina Giacalone, the happy birthday of Sarah Berman and Mr. S. Lee, and the health and well-being of Bishop Timothy Fryer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the delight of every nation. Shine in our hearts today and every day and bring all your people safely to that kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory song. It is the first Noel, number 328, 328.
timetable is ready now, and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your holy church, in which are now offered not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed and sacrificed, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer to you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Juliana and Peregrine and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you today. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Greet each other with the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those not gathered with us today, we offer this spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please join in singing our Alma Redemptoris. Um, it is found on 471, number 471. I'm grateful for those who decorate our little church for Christmas season. It's coming down day after tomorrow, tomorrow being the feast of the baptism of the Lord. If you follow the Lord's life in the windows, the nativity, the epiphany, the presentation, and the baptism of the Lord completes the infancy narratives and begins the Lord's um, public life, really the gospel, and what we call ordinary time. So down comes Christmas and up comes ordinary again. It's nice to have it while it's here. Uh, it's also nice to have the choir. We have such a, a wonderful choir. It's not every parish that celebrates um, in music, in song, the, uh, the Christmas um, uh, feast on, on Christmas Day, the martyrology. Also today, the movable feasts. I'm grateful for that and the seasonal hymns of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our choir is quite accomplished. I'm very grateful for what you do, Chorus Choir. Maybe someday the homilist will get an applause as long as yours. <laughs> I encourage you to really think of the epiphany as happening not long time ago in a faraway place, but rather something in your lives today as a New Year's resolution find something that you can celebrate that will change your life. The fruits, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or the virtues, the theological virtues, and live your life differently as a Christian community filled with joy. Let us stand and pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have, filled, you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever, amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. Please join in singing our final hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 311, verses 1 and 4. <coughs>